Model steam engines, top tip time, part 74. All about a mammoth steam tractor. I have been asked by various viewers if I'd do something about mammoth steam engines. And if I was going to do something about mammoth steam engines, I would wind the design back to be the same design as they were in the 1960s. On the original ones, it was quite a finely made small whistle with like a taper plug cock on it. And to make matters worse, this one will not come out, and neither will the plug on the back head. It seems to have a nut soldered to the boiler, and this is loose. But eventually, the whole thing came away from the boiler, so that's not too bad. It would appear that the design of this particular Mamod TE1 is somewhere in between the time when they had a filler plug and the later design of a piece of glass as a water gauge so you can see how much water you have in the boiler. Before I run the engine, I need to oil it thoroughly. I even put some oil on the whistle, but it's still not coming out of the boiler. I think the entire bush is spinning round. How much compressed air am I putting in the boiler? Well, very little. About £10 per square inch, or maybe less. These small steam toys are not designed to use high-pressure steam. So if you're thinking about doing this, make sure you have a regulator on the end of your compressed air line. These are brass boilers and as such are totally unsuitable for high pressure steam. So £10 per square inch is absolutely the maximum amount of air I would put into a boiler like this. I'm going to run this using steam, but first of all I need to fix the whistle. The bush is loose, but I'm not too worried about it blowing out at £10 per square inch because I can't get it out, even with a large pair of grips. Time to see if it runs. And of course it does, I knew it would, because it's a steam engine, and steam engines will run even if they're in very bad mechanical condition. Time to try it in reverse, and yes, it goes backwards too. These small mammoth steam toys were very much a mass-produced item, filling and lighting the methylated spirit burner. Obviously, first of all, I'm filling it with some methylated spirits. This brings back memories that have been shouted at by my parents for doing this on the kitchen table. It seems to me to be fairly impossible to install a methylated spirit burner in a mammod traction engine without spilling some mess on the table. I really enjoyed that, so when the flame went out I poured some more mess on the table and lit it. Welcome to the Pyromaniac's Guide to Methylated Spirit Burners. The spirit soon evaporates and the flame goes out. And this also degreases the top of the bench to a limited extent. After a while the pressure begins to rise and as you can see, surprise surprise, it's leaking around the whistle. And the whistle isn't blowing because I pushed a piece of silicone rubber tubing over it. A quick test to see how much steam I have and to make sure that the safety valve is definitely blowing off and yes it is and off it goes. Look how much side play and lack of concentricity there is in the flywheel. There's very little pressure inside this boiler. When I lift the safety valve, hardly any steam comes out of there. The engine, though, has been running for quite a while, far longer than you're seeing on the video, so I think the burner needs refilling. Time to look at the mechanical aspect and see whether or not I can improve it. First of all, I'm going to straighten the bracket. I'm putting a lot of pressure on here with this pair of pliers and I'm about to show you a secret way of fixing things. But before that, warning, do not do what you're about to see under any circumstances as you will probably destroy the mechanism entirely plus you may also burn yourself as everything on the engine is very hot. First of all, I need a delicate and sensitive specialist tool. Yes, you've guessed it, it's a soft hammer. And now the engine runs, well, a lot better than it did before. But seriously, please bear in mind, I control these tools really accurately. I've done it for many, many years. I know where to hit it and how hard to hit it. And obviously, the engine should not be in steam when you do things like this. But as I said earlier in the warning, do not do it. I must be doing something right, because the engine is definitely running now much better than it did to start with. One problem with these Mammod steam tractors is every bit of the engine, except for the front wheels, gets really hot. The main axle for the rear wheels goes through the firebox on top of the flame. The heat of the flame, which is considerable, not only boils the water in the boiler, 
that it heats up the axles which in turn heat up the back wheels. Also at the front of the engine the smoke box and chimney also get very hot. That's a good thing though because a lot of the steam coming out of the chimney is now steam that's been generated by boiling inside the smoke box. The whole thing is running a lot more smoother than it did originally. You may be thinking, well where do I go from here? The only way I can get the whistle out of the boiler is to pull it out with a lot of force which will damage the boiler. For now I'm quite happy to run it, in fact I've put it on top of my big traction engine and now it's almost out of steam. I'm going to rebuild this and make it into a nice thing. I've already bought some parts off eBay to do this. I was lucky enough to find an unfired old boiler and firebox assembly. A very good start, I think, to a rebuild. In this clip, I'm removing the canopy. The engine that I'm dismantling is a Mamod TE1A. I'm going to rebuild this as a hybrid version of a TE1. A TE1A canopy is different to the one fitted to the TE1 model. This is a part I bought via eBay. It was £50. Have I gone mad? Well, no, not recently. This is an original TE1 model that's been dismantled and it's never been run. The first thing I noticed though is that the paintwork on the TE1 is a different kind of green to the one on the TE1A. This is good for me because according to my memory the TE1 that I had as a child was painted in a brighter green than the TE1A model. Time to disassemble the motion. The flywheel is just a push fit on this shaft so I'm pulling it off the shaft. On the one I had I think the flywheel was held to the shaft with a screw. If you're doing this yourself be very careful when you remove the spring loaded bolt. Watch this. I hadn't anticipated the strength of the spring, so both the bolt and the spring flew across the workshop. I soon found the bolt, but the spring was more difficult, but with the help of a telescopic magnet, here it is. And before it has time to escape again, I put it in a plastic box. This is the piston, and it seems to work OK when it's running on steam. I need to test it to see whether the seal in the cylinder is good. Don't forget, these Mamod steam engines do not have lubricators. The only lubrication available is as and when you apply some. But despite that, this piston is a very good fit in the cylinder. Listen when I pull it out. There are so many things I could do to this model to improve it, but I like it just the way it is. However, I cannot live with the bent crankshaft, so it's over to the lathe and I'm putting the crankshaft in the three-jaw chuck but only supporting it by the part that is normally inside the flywheel because that's where the bend is. The crankshaft isn't running very true and if I slow the video down you can see just how bent it is. I now need to straighten this crankshaft. I have a special tool for this and it's called a great big hammer. This is a nylon faced hammer so it will not mark the work and I'm tapping the crankshaft with it to see what happens. I've done this many, many times over the years, so I have lots of experience in bashing crankshafts with hammers. Unfortunately, I'm making this job look fairly easy, but it's not, you need some practice. So before trying to straighten a crankshaft, bend a piece of steel the same diameter, put it in the chuck and tap away with the hammer. And when you get it nearly straight, straighten it perfectly by tapping it nearer the chuck. As you can see, this one is now quite good. Well, it's straight in fact. Far better than it was, I could use a dial test indicator to get it perfect, but I think this one will be more than good enough for the tolerances on a Mamod steam engine. Now the crankshaft and the flywheel and the piston and the cylinder can all go in the plastic box. And that is it for this episode of Top Tip Time. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.